we turn our gaze now to uh, a question that is, is often asked by entrepreneurs, and does it really need to be that complicated? And after four successful exits, Mike Finger has focused on that question, and his answer is quite simply, no, it doesn't. Over the last 25 years, Mike has built, bought, and sold multiple small businesses across different categories, and now he's helping other small business owners find that simple path to sell a business successfully. Please, everybody, welcome Mike Finger. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm excited to speak to the small business owners in the crowd today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I want to talk to you today about um, how you move from dreams to dollars when it comes to exiting a small business. Uh, let me start by giving you just a, a real quick overview of my background. Christina touched on the highlights. Um, and while I'm doing that, if you want to jump over to LinkedIn and send me an invite, I uh, love connecting with small business owners, buyers, sellers, and the like. Um, I am... I have been lucky enough in my career to own eight businesses. Um, I've successfully sold four of those businesses. I've had two failures thrown in to keep me honest. And as Christina said, I currently coach small business owners who are interested in creating a business that they can sell when they're ready to. Um, one other thing that you need to know about me is that I am unapologetically small business. Now, now, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that every business that I have ever owned has been small. The largest business I owned had $5 million in annual revenue. So for the sake of our conversation today, let's call any business 5 million or less small and any business 5 million or more big. And if we use that simple definition, here's what I know. I know that 95% of the businesses that exist are small businesses. I know that most all of you involved listening in on the call today are e ever only going to either own, buy, or sell a small business. I know our friends over at Flippa are in the small business business. Uh, I recently learned that uh, the average sales price for a business that sells on Flippa is just over $53,000. That's a small business. In fact, most all of the businesses that sell this year anywhere are going to be small businesses. Folks, we are the market. Small business is the market. But if that's the case, why is it that 95% of the exit stories that we hear about are big business, big business exits, right? It's always about the big money. Every, it seems every story we hear is a $97 million exit. And it can almost make you feel as a small business owner, like uh, your only path to success is to move your small business into being a big business. Like that is the only way that you can successfully exit. And I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. I'm here to tell you that there is a simple way to move to a place where you can successfully sell your business. It's, um, it, it makes us ask why, uh, why so many things that we hear about, private, uh, venture capital, private equity, acquisition groups, these are important things in the industry, but they touch such a small portion of small business owners. What we want to do today is I want to talk to the 95%. I'm not going to help you move into the 5%. I have a single goal for this presentation today, and that is to give you a simple approach to creating real-world, life-changing small business exits. That's what I want to do today. Now, to do that, we're going to have to start by you getting rid of two things, and uh, Blake and Christina earlier uh, alluded to this. I need you to let go of your unicorn dreams, okay? What does a unicorn dream sound like? Well, if you hear it advertised on a podcast, it sounds something like this. It's uh, at the age of 14, Mary sold her business for $100 million and you can do it too, right? Uh, or from the buyer side, it's, uh, it's Tom bought 75 small businesses since Tuesday and this is how you can do it next week. These are spectacular stories. They're fun to listen to. They're inspirational. The problem is, is that for too many of us as small business owners, we also think that they are informational. 
that they are going to provide education to us in terms of how we create a business that can allow us to exit. The problem is, is that small business exits are fundamentally different than big business exits. Big business exits have tools and ingredients available to them that aren't going to exist in the 95%. And the critical thing for us as small business owners is that we not get lost chasing a spectacular vision of an exit at the cost of being able to create an actual real world exit. So what I need you to do as we're moving through this conversation is I need you to let, set aside that unicorn dream for a second. I also need you to set aside the complexity. Let's acknowledge that most people who work in the cello business industry are compensated through the complexity. They uh, are masters of uh, you know, certain uh, complicated jungles of information that allow them to charge you for their service, right? We've got attorneys and accountants and brokers and bankers and M&A advisors and all of these folks that make their paycheck based on the facts the fact that selling a business is complex. And so the narrative in this space tends to be around complexity. Now, I will say that that is starting to change as uh, platforms like Flippa come to the table and start simplifying this exit process for the small business owner. But by and large, the industry is still defined by that complexity. Why is that a problem? It's a problem because we as small business owners can start to believe that the path to success is buried somewhere deep inside the technical of our business, that there is some obscure metric in our business that determines its value or determines whether or not we're going to be able to sell it. Uh, it, it can make us believe that um, it, it's about that complexity when the simple reality is that most small businesses that fail to sell, fail to sell because of some basic, simple element of the business. It's not because they got something wrong on page 46. It's not because they, they missed on something hyper-technical. It's about a basic element in the business. And so... What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna set aside that complexity. We're gonna recognize that our value and our ability to sell isn't about some mystical numbers, but it is in fact about um, a simple approach to this topic. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find a simple approach. Whoa, that's, there we go. We're gonna find a simple approach. We're gonna talk about one core concept today, and I would, submit to you that small, business own, small businesses that don't sell fail to sell primarily because they don't execute on this core concept. And we're going to talk about three basic questions that are going to lead us to a place where we can determine whether our business can be sold. All right, so let's take a short path to our core concept. To sell your small business you must have what? If we were in a, if we were live, I'd have people shout out answers. But there's one element that's been present in every transaction that has ever taken place in the sale of a small business, and that is a buyer, right? Every small business that is sold has a buyer. I'm going to introduce you to your buyer. This is your buyer. Your buyer is most likely an, an individual. So said another way. Let's assume that your buyer looks like you. So I've got this guy up here because he looks a little bit like me. We hear a lot these days about buyer groups and we know about private equity putting together pools of money to purchase. And all of that is exciting and great, but I haven't seen any data that leads me to believe that all of that activity is gonna result in purchases of more than a tiny fraction of the small businesses are available it still remains that your most likely buyer is an individual. So when you think about your buyer, I want you to think about yourself. I want you to project out that you are the one buying this business. Now, what we have to remember about the individual buyer is that they have a long list of things that they want when they go to purchase a business, right? They've got a certain size, scope, industry, all these things that they want. 
But at the end of the day, there are two needs, two primary needs that are going to dominate your buyer's experience and whether or not they're able to buy your business. The first of those needs is that your buyer needs to make a living. I'm not talking about anything spectacular here. I mean, your buyer needs to buy groceries, pay the rent, put gas in the car, right? Your buyer has certain basic needs. They need to be compensated for their time. And that is a core need that they are going to bring to the table when they go to purchase a business. The other basic need that they're going to have is they're going to have to make loan payments. Your buyer is going to need to service the debt on the loan that they take out or receive to purchase your business. And here's the thing, it doesn't really matter where that money comes from, right? If you seller finance your business, sale to this, uh, to this buyer, you're gonna expect payments, right? Um, if I get a bank loan, if I get a loan from friends and family, even if I dip into my own pocket to pay you for this business, I'm still gonna expect to put that money back. So we start from the premise that our individual buyer has these two basic needs. They are going to need to make a living and they're going to need to make loan payments. All right, here's the thing you have to keep in mind. They have to be able to do those two things from the results that your business generates. If you want to be able to sell your small business, you need to be able to be generating results sufficient that allow a buyer to do these two things. All right, so that brings us to our core concept. Our core concept is my results buy my business. Said another way, your business buys itself. This concept, this idea that your business is generating sufficient financial activity to meet the basic needs of your buyer, this, is the core element of determining whether or not you're going to be able to sell your business someday. If your business can do this, you have dramatically improved your ability to sell your business. If it can't, if you're counting on something else, if you're counting on some hidden metric or some mystical formula, maybe it's your brand, your brand is fabulous, somebody's got to pay you a bunch of money for that. That happens, there are exceptions to this rule, but at the end of the day, doing this, my results by my business puts you in a place where you have given your buyer the ability to buy your business. And nothing is more powerful than that when it comes to selling your business. Okay, so we've touched on our core concept that my results by my business. And I just want to pause a second here and recognize what might be going on in the head of some people in the, in the audience. Because if you're sitting there right now and you have a small business that you've been running for the last couple of years and it's unprofitable and you're struggling and you are having a, a trouble making those payments uh, on the loan that you took off to start the business, or if you're struggling to pay yourself anything, it's quite possible and quite often small business owners in that situation will find their, some, themselves thinking, well, my worst case scenario is I can always turn around and sell this thing. That is a hard place to be. I know that because I've been there 10 years into my first business, I had 50 full-time employees. I thought it's time. I was, a, I was a crispy piece of toast. I was burnt out. I was ready to do something else. So I started dialing the brokers. And one after another, they told me, I can't sell your business for you. I can't sell your business for you. At the end of the day, it was because of this. My results didn't create the, the reality for a buyer that would allow them to buy the business. So if you're in that place right now, if you're struggling, um, please understand that I, I, I'm sympathetic to that position. I've been there. There is a place forward from there. And we're going to talk about how you move past um, that place of challenge and struggle to a place where you're creating a business that you can sell. And we're going to do that by focusing on three key questions that you need to ask about the business results that you have. Okay, the first question you need to ask is, are my results desirable? And this isn't a trick question. What I wanna know if I'm your buyer is when I look at the results your business generates, am I gonna say, I gotta get me some of that, right? We look at two key areas when it comes to the desirability of a business. 
we look at the seller's discretionary earnings, first of all. Now, I'm not going to give you a technical definition of seller's discretionary earnings. Essentially, it's the financial benefit that you gain from owning the business. And if I'm going to give you one piece of homework from this session, it's going to be to go out and get a working definition of seller's discretionary earnings for yourself as a small business owner. It is a key factor. More is better. Um, the, the higher your seller's discretionary earnings, the higher your potential uh, purchase price can be for that business. Um, but at the end of the day, the seller's discretionary earnings is a key element in the desirability of your business. The other element is the owner's job. And it, it's, it's funny, I can't tell you how many small business owners come to me because they're interested in, in making their business more sellable. And I ask them, well, why do you want to sell? And they will say to me, because I'm miserable. And I work 18-hour days in lousy conditions with people I hate uh, for not much money. I I'm, I'm just miserable. And I always have to pause at, at that point. And then I ask them this question. I say, if your job sucks, why would someone pay you for the opportunity to do that? Right? It, we, we, again, sometimes we think that we're working. We're in this battle as a small business owner. And it's horrible for us, but we forget that ownability is sellability. We forget that creating a business that's attractive to us as an owner, whether it's in the seller's discretionary earnings or in our own job, is the key to creating a business that would work for a buyer. So these are the two key factors in are my results desirable? All right, question number two. Can a buyer duplicate my results? What are we asking here? We're asking, are you as the owner replaceable? There's two elements that come into play here. Have you built a team? Are there people other than yourself that contribute to the results that you're selling to me as a buyer? And again, we're talking to small business owners. So I know many of you out there are like, I don't have any employees. I'm not doing, I get that. Vendors, independent contractors, tools that you use, all of these things can be part of the team that you use. You need to be able to transfer this to me in a way that allows me to be able to say that the results are not dependent on you as the outgoing owner. I need to be able to duplicate the results. The other element here is creating systems, right? When we talk about systems, I'm really just talking about whether or not the information that create your results exists somewhere other than in your head or someone else's head, right? Did you write the stuff down? Where does the knowledge live? If you build a team, if you create systems, you create a business where it's easier for me to buy it and duplicate the results that you've generated. All right, that's question number two. Our last question, can I document my results? Can I document my results? So when we talk about documenting your results, having an online business makes this question easier to answer, right? There's a lot of outside tools and um, features that I can use as a buyer to check out what you've told me. Is the traffic really what you said it was? Have the sales been what you said they were? I can document some of that stuff. Um, but the basic element of this question is if you can't prove it as the seller, it didn't happen. So what I need you to do is you need to keep clean records. Now, we're not just talking about traffic records, right? We're talking about your financial records. We are talking about basic elements of, of, of your uh, business operation. Do you have a contract with your independent contractors? Does the vendor have an agreement with you? Can you transfer those things to me as a buyer? If you know you can, that's of huge benefit to me because I know that the, the business is staying whole as I transfer it. So question number three, can I document my results? All right, so that's our simple approach. We have a core um, uh, premise of my results my, by my business, which just says that your business creates financial results sufficient to allow your buyer to meet their basic needs. Then you ask these questions about those results. Are my results desirable? Can a buyer duplicate my results? And can I document my results? If you can answer yes to those three questions, if you are in a place where you can say, my results can buy my business, 
you have come much closer to a place where a small business exit can change your life. Take a simple approach. Uh, check me out at the website, exitoasis.com, or like I said, uh, love to connect on LinkedIn. Mike, awesome. Thank you so much for the insights. Um, there's, there's quite a bit of chatter going on, actually, and, and people are certainly uh, saying a few things. One, that all of your advice and insight rings true. Um, and secondly, there's a bunch of people who are, who are currently looking at businesses and, and they're using some of your insights to help there. Um, I, I've got a quick question. It came from uh, one of our attendees. Uh, firstly, um, you know, given all of this insight, you've made the point that you know, the business needs to be able to pay um, the income of the prospective buyer as well as it does need to be able to repay um, that prospective buyer's loan in the event that that was um, what they needed to use to, to acquire that business. So we right. get that and that's great. How relevant though are, are multiples um, and industry comp sets? And, and does that come into play a lot or, or is, it, is it truly just a function of how that one particular business is performing and how that fits that buyer's needs? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question, Blake. And, and from my perspective and for the small business owners I work with, what we look to do is we establish a floor. Um, I, I want to be able to sell my business using a basic valuation, a low multiplier, uh, and still achieve my goals, right? It, 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 I would never suggest that someone go to market and list their business just based on what we've talked about here in this presentation, mm -hmm. right? What we want to do is we, we want to have a business that can meet that buyer's needs. And then if the market's hot, if things are moving, by all means, let's sell it for more than that basic need being met, right? What happens, uh, unfortunately, is I'll, um, I'll run into owners who are like, hey, I want to I sell my business for a million dollars. It's in a really exciting space. It's hot. And their business is losing money. And I say, okay, what, you know, what, uh, how's your buyer going to pay for it? And they'll say, you know, they'll get a little grin on their face and they'll say, well, that's the buyer's problem, isn't it? And we lose sight of the fact that again, that buyer is an individual just like us. No, they've got these needs they've need, they need to meet. So yes, the multipliers are important. All of those things come into pay in the actual selling of the business but creating that underlying strength of operation that gives us the place to confidently go forward. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, we, we see this a lot. Uh, people will talk about the fact that they've got a great brand. Um, they'll talk about the fact that they've got um, a lot of inventory on hand and they want to make a, um, a multiple on the inventory value. Um, we talk to a lot of people who have um, quite unrealistic expectations of of the value of their business, obviously. And so I think a lot of your insight rings true today. What about industry, um, category, niche? Um, how much does that play into the outcome of a successful exit in your opinion? Well, I mean, it can be huge, right? Uh, we, we know if you happen to be in a hot space at the right time that um, silly things can happen. And it's really exciting when, the, when they happen. And it's really fun when we hear those stories and it can be uh, terribly destructive to our ideas as small business owners, right? Because we can think about those exceptions. I did it, Blake. I, I had read an article that said, it, uh, businesses in my industry sell for two times revenue. And so I was all about the revenue, man. I was, all, I was chasing that because I thought 2X, 2X, 2X my revenue. Go to sell the business, realize revenue has absolutely nothing to do with the value of my business. So it, the, that industry stuff, those specific hot, yeah, hot stuff happens. If you're in a hot space, great, have a ball. Like I said earlier, I'm talking to the 95%, the folks that are out there doing stuff day in and day out at their dining room table at 12 o'clock at night. These are the folks that can benefit from taking a simple approach to selling their business. I think what we see a bit is, is some people confuse um, investment multiples um, and growth prospect uh, with exit multiples for small business. Yeah. And so they'll say, well, you know, SaaS businesses, um, you know, NASDAQ traded SaaS businesses are trading at 15 times, 15 times revenue. Um, so therefore I want 15 times revenue. Um, right. The difference of course, is that that NASDAQ traded business is probably hyper growth. Um, that NASDAQ traded business is, is probably still investing um, for, for long-term growth opportunity. 
Whereas um, in many cases, small businesses have realized, um, I guess, the fullest potential of that particular business owner. And now it's less about investing for growth and it's more about, as you said, paying for an income for that new prospective buyer. Um, I, I guess you've had to act like a bit of a psychologist over time and, and a counsellor. How do you get small business owners to recognise the difference between um, enterprise level or institutional level investment, venture capital-like investment, and the difference between that and selling a small business? Uh, it's so important. And, and really what it comes down to is, is taking a buyer's perspective, right? The, the second meeting I have with, with someone I coach, we sit down and we analyze the business as it's going to be evaluated by a potential buyer. And we go through the numbers and we do all that stuff. And so often we get to the end of the day or the end of that process. And we see that if I buy your business for what you want to exit at, I can't pay myself anything. And I've got to come up with $50,000 a year to make the payments. How can anyone do that? Now, again, we know there are exceptions, right? We know there's that, that one in a thousand where it takes place. And those are the stories that, could, that, that we hear about so often. But you have to think about what you're doing from a buyer's perspective. No one is going to compensate you for the misery that you've, uh, that you've gone through to build this business unless that effort has created results. That's the core. Our, again, it's easy to get caught up in the exceptions. It's easy for us to, to hope that that happens. And, and again, fabulous if that happens, but let's do it from a base of confidence where we have built into our business the core element that allows a buyer to buy our business. Yeah, what we often say, Mark, and I'm, I'm sure you agree, please let me know if you don't, but um, buyers will pay for performance but look for opportunity, right? So that's very different to venture investing where you're ultimately investing in opportunity, most likely anyway. That's um, right. And so that performance piece is what we keep on saying to people, performance, performance, performance. Think about the cash flow opportunities and think about how you can start to um, put more in your back pocket because that will mean that the prospective buyer has the opportunity to do so themselves. Absolutely. I, I, I agree 100%. It is about, like I said, Ownability is sellability. If this is a solid, good business for you as the owner, chances are pretty good it's going to be a solid, good business for a buyer. Awesome, Mike. Thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate the insights. Fantastic. These sessions are recorded and we will get all registered uh, attendees a copy of Mike's presentations and the other to come. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you, Blake.